Then chapter 19 and verse 13, Jesus says this. Then children were brought to him that he might lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples rebuked the people, but Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and then he went away. These verses tell me three things right away. Three things I see in these verses right away. Parents want to bring their kids to Jesus. This text also shows us that Jesus is more. The second thing this text shows us is Jesus, that Jesus is more than willing to welcome children into his presence. But there is a third thing I see, and that is that there was another group, and, and, and we'll say the disciples, but let's say the learned church folk. The learned church folk, we see that if Jesus had not interjected, they would have missed the opportunity. They would have hindered the children from coming to Jesus. First, let me read to you these quotes. This one comes from a book called Child Guidance. God wants, listen to, listen to what she writes. God wants every child of tender age to be his child, to be adopted into his family. Young though they may be, the youth may be members of the household of faith and have a most precious experience. They may have hearts that are tender and ready to receive impressions that will be lasting. They may have their hearts drawn out in confidence and love for Jesus and live for the Savior. Here's what the Bible, here, here's what, uh, the Bible tells us when we read Matthew chapter 19, verses 13 through 15, that Jesus' heart was open to little children. Here's what Ellen White affirms in that, that Jesus is longing for every child at a tender age to know the heart of Jesus and to have their hearts connected to Jesus. A second statement also from Child Guidance. She writes, an eminent divine, in other words, a spiritually wise person once asked, how old a child must be before there was a reasonable hope of his being a Christian. And here's what she writes and affirms. Age has nothing to do with it. Love to Jesus, trust, repose, confidence are all qualities, are qualities that all agree with the child's nature. As soon as a child, listen to this, as soon as a child can love and trust his mother, then he can love and trust Jesus. Do you hear that? As soon as a child says, man, that's my mom and I love her and I trust her. They're ready to say, that's my Jesus and I love and I trust him. And then the last statement from a book called Counsels the Parents, Teachers and Students. We may bring hundreds and thousands of children to Christ if we will work for them. And here is how the work is described. Children require more than a casual notice, more than a word of encouragement. They need painstaking, prayerful, careful labor. The heart that is filled with love and sympathy will reach the hearts of the youth. In other words, if you're here and you don't have any kids, if you're here and, and, and your kids are long grown and gone, you still have a responsibility for the children of this church because the heart of Jesus, the heart of Jesus notices our children, every one of them, and says that if our hearts are in tune with Jesus, then our hearts will notice the children as well. Can I tell you that if we don't work for them, church, she says, if we work for them, we'll reach hundreds and thousands of children. But if we don't work for them, we will continue to lose hundreds and thousands of children. David Trim, writing in the Adventist Review in 2022, shared this. He said, those that leave the Adventist church, 62% of them do when they are young adults, usually between the ages of 18 to 22 years old. And the top reason reported why people leave Jesus, why people leave Christianity, is a lack of relationships in the church. As Jana Magruder stated, we have to build belonging as soon as kids come to us. We have to begin building belonging as soon as the kids come to us. We're glad when kids are here, but we want to move kids from I'm here to I'm listening. 
Sabbath school teachers, have you ever been in a room with a group of kids, teachers? You've been in a room and you've been like, man, I wish they would just listen to me. We want them to move from I'm here to I'm listening. And, and from I'm listening to now I'm, I'm understanding. And from I'm understanding to I'm believing. And from I'm believing to I'm growing. And, and, and at last, we want the kids to move from I'm growing to I'm sharing Jesus with others. But none of that happens till young kids, till students know that they are recognized by the church. I'm here. Do you recognize me? These kids need four significant relationships from the church and within the church. And here's these four significant relationships and they come in the acronym FLIP. F-L-I-P. The F stands for friends. A child needs a good friend at church. L let me say that differently. A child needs a good spiritual friend at church. A good spiritual friend at church. Remember Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 17 says, iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. This is talking about friendship. This is talking about friendship. Young people, Ellen White says this about you. She says that you can do good and exert an influence upon your friends, which will be saving for their lives. So Ben, you can, by being a good friend, can help save one of your friends for Jesus Christ. This is what this is saying to us. This is what this is saying to us. Guess what, parents? You know this. Kids want to go where their friends are. If your kids have a friend at church, don't say, oh, I don't want to go there today. I want to go see my friends. That's an okay reason to go, want to go to church. Last night we went to someone's house and, and we were going to someone's house. And you know, the very first thing that one of my boys asked us, the very first thing, are any of our friends going to be there? Very first thing. Second thing was, what's the food going to be? That was the second thing. You know, friends and food. Kids are just like us as adults. We may go food first and then friends. If, if you'll feed me, I'll show up most places, but friends and then food. I was thinking back to my own childhood and you all have heard, if you've been here, if you haven't been here, let me just tell you, my, my past is a bit checkered, but, but there was only a short time in my life where I really enjoyed when I was a kid going to Sabbath school and church. I, I, I was thinking about it. There was only about a three year window when I was a young kid that I really enjoyed going to Sabbath school and church. That was between second and fourth grade, second, third and fourth grade. And, I, and as I was thinking back to that time, I was like, what was it that, that made me enjoy going to church at that time? And I immediately remembered that I had two friends that were at Sabbath school, Harold Manrique and Tara Wallace. Harold, I went to school with, and we weren't always that great of friends at school. We, we kind of fought a lot sometimes at school. And, and Tara, she didn't even go to school with us, but she was just a friend of ours there in Sabbath school. And because of Harold and Tara, I remember always wanting to go to church, to go to church. At the end of my fourth grade year though, our family, we changed churches. My friends stayed at the church that they were at, the Azure Hill Seventh-day Adventist Church in Southern California. And we moved to another church and I never again enjoyed going to Sabbath school in my childhood. And in never was a habit again in my childhood years. Church, how are we doing at fostering friendships at church? Fostering relationships at church. Societal studies show that Gen Z and Gen Alpha close behind are the loneliest generation of children since they began studying things, these things. With all their technology and with all their access to one another, they are more lonely than any other group has reported in the history of our world. Why is that? Because friendships are made not through screens, but face-to-face -face interactions. Church, maybe we can be a place where, where kids can learn to, to be encouraged to have face-to-face -face interaction. This can happen through pathfinders and adventurers and through our family connect groups. And of course, through our Sabbath schools as well. One of Pastor Lerone's BHAGs, if you were at the State of the Church, you know a BHAG is a big, hairy, audacious goal. And that's from Jim Collins, those of you who like business books. But, but Pastor Lerone, one of her BHAGs is that every family that has a child in it will become a part of a family connect group. Because what we're seeing is, is, is families, in the number of families that the kids that are in a family connect group, they're beginning to love church 
And from their love of church, they're beginning to love Jesus more. And as they love Jesus, they're beginning to share Jesus more because they belong in this family group. Iron sharpens iron. Kids need friends. If your kid has a friend here and they say, hey, I want to go to church to see my friends, get up, get out of bed and go to church. And kids, look for those kids that maybe don't have a friend and be a friend to them because you could be a savior to that companion. Look for this opportunity. The second letter, L. L is for leaders. L is for leaders. All children need to have adult leaders who care about them and know their names, who know their needs and their situations. Kids and students need to know there is a leader who misses them when they aren't there and who celebrates them when they are there. Kids need this. The research shows that, that kids, the adults who report having a positive outlook on church and a positive, healthy, mature relationship with Christ. Over 80% of them report that they had a, an adult that was not their parent, that was not their pastor, that at church cared about them, that at church cared about them. Think about that. Just one adult in their life that cared about them. A friend of mine, Marianne Gilbert, she did actually a doctoral study on this. She's a, she's a district court judge in California. And yes, she wanted to get a doctorate in religion. So she got this doctorate in religion and she did a study on this. And in her research, she found that the kids that were most likely to stay connected to Jesus were kids that discovered that they had an adult that they could relate to at church that wasn't the pastor and wasn't their parent. You could be that person for one of these kids. This is biblical. In the book of Titus, we're reminded that, that the older women are to mentor and minister to the younger women and the older men are to mentor and minister to the younger men. The, the power of just one leader can be incredibly meaningful in the life of a child. It encourages them to be connected to the church where they'll continue to come and then maybe one day they'll hear that voice of Jesus calling and say, come follow me. This is why volunteerism, whether in a ministry, children's ministry here at this church or a family connect group or one of our, our, our other children's ministries or our Sabbath school is so important. I thought back to that three year time span when I really loved going to Sabbath school, when I really loved going to church. And not only did I have Tara and Harold as my friends in that church, but I remembered that there was an adult that was so meaningful to me. Her name was Bonnie. I don't know what her last name was. Her name was Bonnie. She wasn't the main leader of our Sabbath school class. She was the table group leader. Now, when I went to Sabbath school, young people, I, I've, I've watched our Sabbath schools here, and I know that, that, uh, that you guys kind of get to pick your own tables. You just kind of <laughs> and spread out and pick your own tables. Well, we had tables assigned when I was a kid. Did any of you have tables assigned when you were a kid? I see some of those hands. We had tables assigned when we were kids, and so I am so lucky that I was assigned to Vonnie's table. Vonnie was a graduate student at Loma Linda University. I don't know if she graduated while I was there or not, or she just used the whole three years, but she was a graduate student at Loma Linda University, but was volunteering at the Azure Hills Church as our table leader for that Sabbath school. I was so happy about this because she was so amazing. And I loved going to Sabbath school to see Harold and Tara and to see Vonnie. I mean, I don't think I would have liked Sabbath school as much otherwise, because our main teacher, she was not very, she was, she was mean. <laughs> she was mean. She didn't understand that God was already calling me into ministry. And I was learning to talk in church. And so every Sabbath school, she would tell me, be quiet. I swear, if there had been a chalkboard in that room, she would have had my name on it with check, 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 check. I know to some of you kids, you don't understand what that is. But trust me, some of your parents do. I can still see my name up there on the board. Check, 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 check. She would have done that. But, but luckily, Vonnie was so nice. And, and not only was she nice there, but she was meaningful in our lives. She took us horseback riding. She took us to the beach, our whole table group. She took us to a California Angels baseball game. We were all just, she was so meaningful. And I loved going to Sabbath school at that time. Your volunteerism has an impact. Adults, are you volunteering for the young people? 
so you can be that adult in their life that connects them to the church and then encourages them to keep their eyes open and their ears open to see and to hear the love of Jesus. In your bulletin today, actually, there is an announcement about volunteering for Vacation Bible School. It's on page nine. If you want to look, it's a great opportunity. Actually, it's called the Vacation Bible Experience. Pastor Lerone is getting super hip on us. It's not Vacation Bible School, it's Vacation Bible Experience. So adults, young adults, maybe this is a place to serve. By the way, just while I'm thinking about this, we just saw Yadira. She talked about how she brought her daughter to to Sabbath school. Thank you for that testimony, Yadira. She brought, I mean, brought her daughter to Vacation Bible School and, and then became connected to the church. So it worked for her as a parent, which is wonderful. But you know, there's another person in our midst. Her name is Patty Serrano. And she was once at our house for a gathering of my, uh, uh, my son was having some sort of gathering. He was having his class over and she was there. And so Patty and I were talking and I asked her about her story. Everybody has a story. You should ask people about their stories. Stories are really great. And it's cool to hear people's stories. So she was telling me her story and I was asking her how, uh, you know, asking her questions. And I found out two things. I found out that she wasn't born or raised a Seventh-day Adventist and that she wasn't born or raised here in the United States. And so as we began to talk, she was born and raised in Mexico. But she said to me, I said, well, how'd you become connected to the Adventist church? And she said to me, when I was a kid, every year a group of young people would come down to Mexico in our neighborhood and they would hold a vacation Bible school at the local church. That local church happened to be a Seventh-day Adventist church. And she said she looked forward to that vacation Bible school every year so she could go to that vacation Bible school. When she got older and she eventually came to the United States and she began to explore faith for herself, she was reminded of that vacation Bible school. And now Patty Serrano is one of our teachers at Spencerville Adventist Academy as she chose to give her life to Jesus and follow Jesus. Think about that. The impact of seed sown with just one week of, of volunteerism, just one week of vol volunteerism, the, the seed sown for the power of eternity. Children need our volunteerism, our leadership in their lives. The third letter, I, is influencers. This is the third relationship. And when I'm speaking of influencers, I'm not talking about social media influencers. When I was saying this in first service, I said something and all the young people that were sitting over here laughed at me because one, I guess I don't know who influencers are, are because I said someone and they just kind of rolled their eyes at me or maybe because I'm old and not cool, they don't think I should be talking about influencers. But, but some young people helped me out between church service and they told me, like, if I say Mr. Beast, do any of you know who Mr. Beast is? Yeah, do any of you know who Mr. Beast is? Okay, Derek was really enthusiastic about that. Maybe he's influenced by Mr. Beast. I don't even know who Mr. Beast is. And I don't think it's bad. So please, if it, if it is, some young people came up and told me, is it bad? No, it's not bad. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Um, but Mr. Beast, I guess, is an influencer. I'm not talking about those type of influencers. I'm talking about the, the influencers that are in the church, influencers that are in the church. Our kids need to see the influence of the broader faith community in the church. They need to see the people that have influence in various aspects of their lives, to see older adults and older kids involved and invested in the church. I was thinking about this. I was watching you sing, Mr. Martinez, up here. You're going to be our new head principal at Spencerville Adventist Academy. He's one of our vice principals right now. And I was thinking about something that I've read from Ellen White where she talks about how the teachers, when, when kids see their teachers and, and the people from their school involved in their church, it has a significant impact on them falling in love with Jesus. So teachers, and Mr. Martinez, thank you. You just being in the choir is helping to reach children for Jesus, helping to reach children for Jesus. Influencers, they need to see adults engaging with them and, 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 and people that, they, that, that, that are influencers in the church and they look to, up to see that they're sincere in their faith and their belief. To see that, that those adults care about them outside, that those, that those adults look at them as they walk through the hall and say hello to them, are willing to take a moment to talk to them if they wanna to talk to them. 
Not all the influencers are going to be people that are volunteering in the children's room, but sometimes they're willing to just say, hey, how are you doing for a minute? Two, two things I've seen of this recently that I just love. One was Elder Bill Knott was out in the foyer one Sabbath, sitting there with Andrew Pozo. For those of you that don't know, Andrew Pozo is one of our eighth graders and he preached for Pathfinder Sabbath. And some of you said he had some similar mannerisms to me. Um, and, uh, and, you know, we're all copycats. People, my wife says, you look like Dwight when you do that. So I look like someone and we all look like people. So, but Andrew was, had reached out or had stopped Bill and said, hey, will you talk to me about preaching? What does he see? He sees this guy, he's a good preacher up front. I'm gonna ask him about preaching. That connects and grows things. Selan Abraham, a friend of mine here in the church, he goes to all these different events at the school, even though he doesn't have any kids in those events. When I said that in first service, there was a whole group of high school and young people over here and they all nodded and, and understood that. It's wonderful when you guys are doing this and what an impact it makes for the kingdom of God and for these young people, for these young people. And I want to say something to the young adults and the youth that are older. You can do so much to help kids that are younger than you fall in love with Jesus. Young people, listen to me, and young adults, listen to me. I'm an old dude. I am not cool anymore. I, I like to think I am, but my kids remind me often that I am not. I even had a really corny dad joke in here and I pulled it out just because I didn't want to embarrass my kids. But listen, I've seen it how, we, but, but, but younger kids look up to the older kids and the older kids look up to the young adults. And we're seeing the impact of this in our church. A few years ago, there was a young man who was baptized. And after he was baptized, he said, you know, I want to be a deacon. And so we made him a deacon, not just like a, a fake by name deacon, oh, we're pretend deacon. No, an actual serving, functioning, he's on a team, he's expected to be here, deacon. And soon after that, you know what we saw? We started seeing a multitude of other young boys and girls that are now serving with the diaconate. And Tom tells me that some of his best deacon and deaconesses are the young people that are in our church. That young man, by saying, I wanna be a deacon, stepping forward, I would guess that he influenced others in his peer group and younger than him to make that same step. We're seeing this influence in our midweek service on Wednesday nights. I was in a room last week in one of the breakout rooms for our prayer time. And in that room, there were 13 teenagers and seven adults. And, and Mr. Lale, Tim Lale, one of our elders over prayer, he didn't have, he said, you know, I didn't have enough elders volunteer for the prayer room tonight. And one of the teens said, I'll do it. And he led the prayer time with the 13 teenagers and the seven adults. Our young people are, are stepping forward. And as other kids see this happening, young people step forward because as other kids see this happening, they're gonna follow your lead because guess what? They don't care about being like me that much, but they like you. They think you're cool. They wanna be with their peers. And finally, the fourth relationship in FLIP is pastors, is pastors. Listen, it actually is one of the least important relationships, whether or not you believe it. Just studies show that, that there's so many other relationships that are more important for our young people to grow in Christ than the pastor. I know a lot of times we, we say, well, let's bring the kid to the pastor or, or pastor, put my kid up front or pastor, do this or pastor, do this. But the truth is, 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 is those other relationships that I just mentioned are actually more important but the pastor still is important. Kids need to know that we're not only the pastor of their parents, we're the pastor of their kids as well. And that's why one of the requirements to be on this team, on this staff at Spencerville as a pastor is no matter their role, you are expected to invest in young people, period. That's it. And everyone does. We are at the school all the time all the time. Pastor Candace just finished a week of worship there at the school and I heard it was a wonderful blessing. It was a wonderful blessing. Pastor Jason, his audio visual team has grown by 15% and almost every single one of them is our children, our youth and young adults. Troy, just the other week, he, I came out of a worship service and Troy, the leader of our audio, our, our visual aspects, the cameras, he said, we had this young guy on the camera and he said to me, Man, he's already better than a bunch of our adults. 
These kids are digital natives. They know how to do this stuff before we as adults do. And we're, so we're just praising God for that. But, but as pastors, we need to make sure the kids know that we love them and care about them as well. Deuteronomy chapter six, which Kevin read beautifully, that, that beautiful patriarchal voice that Kevin read. In verses four through seven, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Hear, O Spencerville, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, Spencerville, with all your soul, Spencerville, and with all your might, Spencerville. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. And Spencerville, you shall teach them diligently to your children. And you shall do this as you walk with them and as you sit with them and as you talk with them, when you lie down and when you get up. Now, this is a course we often think about in the context of the house, and that is true. That is true. It is for parents. And again, we're going to talk about that more next week. But we're to talk with them when we sit and when we walk and when we go about. That's relational language, and that's something that we can all do. We can all be relational towards our young people. The relationship should not just be in a child's home, but our children should feel like this is their family too. Jesus said, let the children come to me and do not hinder them. Do not hinder them. Is there any time that we hinder our children from coming to Jesus? Not because we don't give them enough resources. This church is so generous with their resources for young people. Between the school and all the things that happen here, you, whenever we say, hey, can we have money for the kids? People say, yes, this church is generous with their money. But, but could we do a little better job of being generous with our relationships as well? With our relationships as well. Let's be like Jesus. Well, I like how Ed said, clear the path and let the children come to me. There was a great evangelist in Chicago many, many, many years ago. His name was Dwight L. Moody. Thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of people were baptized by Dwight L. Moody. And Dwight Moody, towards the end of his career, said, looking back upon my life and upon my ministry, if I could relive it, I would devote my entire ministry to bringing children to Jesus. I baptized all these people, but as I look back, if I could live it all over again, I would do everything I could to bring children to Jesus. Brothers and sisters, let us be a church that we ourselves are coming to Jesus and because we are in love with Jesus, we say we're doing everything we can to bring children to Jesus. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit the like button here. Subscribe to our page for future videos. Or for the next video, click the box right here.